Hey, how's it going, y'all? In this video, I'm going to show you how I use my video cart to, to film people giving testimonials, people promoting their brands or businesses, and how I was able to have this video cart out of the way so that people can walk comfortably without bumping into my camera or tripod. Because, you know, people don't see a C-stand or people don't see a tripod and they, they knock it down and that's your camera or microphone. So let's get started. So first things first, shout out to the Change Me Foundation for having me a part of this project. It was, it's really dope that I was able to be a part of something so amazing. So before I got out to the event, I started thinking about how am I going to bring all my lights, my cameras, my tripod, my mic stands, everything, and have it situated in a way that it's out of the way. Clients or people or kids are not bumping into it or anything. And I thought about this video cart that I made a while back. So I brought out the video cart and I made a few little changes to it and it worked out. So I'll show you a clip on how it looks. So pretty much I have my Sony A7C and it's mounted to a Elgato wave arm. And that Elgato wave arm is mounted to my video cart, this cart that I got off of Amazon. So that's mounted there. Initially, I was going to use two cameras, I was going to have one straight on and then like one caddy corner on the other side to get like a second angle to be super cinematic and cool, but less is more. And I wanted to be, I wanted to be sure that I can actually do this comfortably and not look all crazy. Like the, all the booths they're selling, uh, juice, towels, pens, and here's Gil's booth looking like, like some, <laughs> like machine guns just ready and, and pointing. And th it's crazy how the Elgato wave arm, a lot of people didn't even notice that I had the camera on there. So my camera was mounted right on here. As you can see, like in the video, it was mounted right on it. And people didn't even notice that there was a camera there. And I didn't have the camera recording the whole time. I just hit record on Ecamm. The camera was connected to my computer via USB-C. I only hit record when people were ready to be interviewed for the video segment. So it it's it was dope. It, it was a dope setup. Um, as far as audio goes, I used the Rode Wireless Go twos. I had a handheld microphone, not the Rode one, but something else from Amazon. It worked great. It was it was pretty fun to use. I'm not gonna lie. And as far as storage goes, I use an SSD to actually save all of the video files on there, and it it just worked flawlessly. There was no hiccups and. It's crazy because I've been in other productions where I brought everything. My truck was filled to the brim for just in cases, or I'm going to bring this just in case. I'm going to bring this other camera body. I'm going to bring this other lens just in case. I didn't. I only used a Sony a7C and I had a 50 millimeter f1.4 lens on there. And when I had more than one person in the frame, I just would swap it out with my 20 millimeter 1.8 Sony G lens. and. I was able to do everything with just one camera and one microphone. The computer that I used was a MacBook Pro M3, and I had just Ecamm running. Ecamm would just basically take the signal from my camera via USB-C and my Rode Wireless Go 2 microphone and just combine them together into Ecamm Live. And I just hit record. It records everything. It syncs everything by itself. And after I hit done, after I hit finish, it gives me the video file. It works flawlessly with no hiccups. I didn't have any issues at all. The only issue presented at the event was just everybody else. <laughs> Not saying that people were annoying, but it's just that people were talking and we had a DJ, we had, th it actually wasn't a bad thing. It just was lively. Of course, people are going to be talking, having a good old time, asking for hot dogs, the bathroom and all that. So one thing I knew that I would need to do is actually edit the audio and video in a particular way. And I use CapCut for that. So I would use CapCut to do the voice isolation, the noise reduction, and just everything just to clean up the audio. I'm going to show you how I did just that. All right, let's get started. So we're in CapCut here, and if you listen. Hi, my name is Rebecca. I'm the social media manager for the World Ace Museum. We're located in. All right, so what we're going to do is click the video and go to audio. And we're going to scroll down. And what I like to do is hit noise reduction. 
and then voice isolation, voice enhance, enhance voice. Why did I say that backwards? Hi, my name is Rebecca. I'm the social media manager for the World Ace Museum. We're located in Fort Lauderdale in the Art Serve building. It sounds way better and it's fast. It's super fast. So here's another example. Check this out. Hey, everyone. I am Wendy, Coach Wendy. I am a wellness trainer. You can hear the music, the samba. Looks like they're like dancing, like maraca, whatever music. And then let's go to audio. Let's go to voice, eh, enhanced voice. I don't know why I see, am I dyslexic? Is, is that dyslexia? I don't know. Um, and then production noise. <laughs> and then isolation voice. <laughs> so, uh, to basically clean up the audio and process. It's gonna take a little bit, so let's wait. Shouldn't take that long. So after it's done, finished processing, we can now play the audio. I'm gonna cut the video up a little bit so we don't have to wait too long. I like CapCut because the same shortcuts for Final Cut Pro work with it, and it's, it's fantastic. Hey everyone, I am Wendy, Coach Wendy. I am a wellness trainer, and my business is Pinkberry Boost. So I came out here to change me foundation. So that's pretty much it. I would use CapCut to isolate the voice. I would use CapCut to reduce the noise in the background. And it sounds really good. Final Cut Pro does this. DaVinci Resolve does this. But to me, I like CapCut because it's a lot quicker. It's just in and out. I can just do what I got to do. It doesn't require a lot of resources from my computer. And it just works. And if it works, you know, why not? Uh, CapCut does a lot of other great things, but I just use it for that when I'm doing events. And especially if I'm dealing with a loud environment, I will use CapCut for everything. All right, y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please comment down below, like, subscribe. And I wanted to start a new segment ending my video is shouting out the people who support me on my YouTube channel, uh, my podcast, and that's via Patreon. So shout out to Hassan. I'm going to put a link to his YouTube channel here. He is a great creator and a great friend, somebody who reaches out to me and tells me about my podcast. And it's not because he's telling me that my podcast is great, that I'm telling him that he's a great person, but it's just Really good to hear that someone really enjoys the things that you create and so much so that they are willing to support you and you didn't have, you didn't tell them to. Um, shout out to, so Hassan was my first Patreon subscriber. Really it was my wife. <laughs> my wife, as soon as I created the Patreon, my wife was number one. She's the first one. And then Hassan was like immediately after. So outside of my wife, it was Hassan, if that makes sense. Next person that I want to give a shout out to is my wife for continuously supporting me and she joined the patreon i mean she's just like hey i'm just gonna support you on this and shout out to l a uh, great creator great friend she actually has a podcast called the agreeable gray area podcast i'm gonna put the link in the description down below uh she's fantastic and yeah so that's all for now if y'all want to support this channel, go to click the link in the description. I have the link to the Patreon and my Amazon uh, book, Photography Word Search book, to help you with all of the photography creative terms. Not only photography, there's a lot of uh, creative terms in there as well. So if you bored and you want you like crossword you like crossword puzzles and you or you just want to learn about the world of photography and just content creating in general, open up the the crossword puzzle and go to the back. There is a glossary of 250 words. All right. Hope y'all enjoy this video. Peace.